This lesson is about approximating square root and plotting on a number line. But before that, let us have a recall. Write whether the given is perfect square or non-perfect square. If perfect square, identify the square root for number 1, 25. 25 is a perfect square. This is because 25 has a square root. And the square root of 25 is positive and negative 5. However, if we are about to get the principal root, then the square root of 25 will be 5. Another, 13. 13 is a non-perfect square. This is because there are no factors that when multiplied to itself, the answer will be 13. Same with 34. This is also a non-perfect square. Next one is 49. Well, this is a perfect square. This is because the square root of 49 is positive and negative 7. But then again, the principal root will be 7. And for the last one, 60. Well, this is a non-perfect square. Because there are no factors that when multiplied to itself, the answer is 60. Moving on to our real lesson, let us have this. Since we already know the difference between perfect squares and non-perfect squares, let us try to plot this perfect squares. So, we must draw a number line. Since we are just going to plot the principal root, the number line that we have has positive numbers only. So, the square root of 1 is 1, which means to say we have here the square root of 1. The square root of 4 is 2, so means to say that we have here the square root of 4. And so on. We have the square root of 9, which is 3, the square root of 16, which is 4, and the square root of 25, which is 5. Well, in here, we will have square root of 36 and then the square root of 49. It's very easy, right? This is how we are going to plot perfect squares. Now, what if the given are non-perfect squares? For example, square root of 2. Well, if we use this line, we can clearly say that the square root of 2 is beside the square root of 1. And square root of 3 is beside the square root of 2. So, let us try this one. Locate and plot the square root of 13 on a number line. As we all know, the square root of 13 is a non-perfect square. Now what are we going to do? So let us try to list first some of the perfect squares. Well, from here, we can say that the square root of 13 is between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. Which means to say that the square root of 13 is greater than 9. But it is 
less than the square root of 16. And the square root of 9 is 3. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. Well, from here, we can say that the square root of 13 is somewhere between 3 and 4. Another. Square root of 21. Again, this is a non-perfect square. Well, from the list of the perfect squares, we can say that the square root of 21 is between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. The square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of 25 is 5. Well, from here, we can now plot this on a number line. Since it is between 4 and 5, we can plot 21 between 4 and 5. Another. Square root of 40. So, let us list some of the perfect squares near on 40. So we have the square root of 36, which is 6, and the square root of 49, which is 7. From here, we can say that the square root of 40 is between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49. Square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 49 is 7. Well, we can say that the square root of 40 is somewhere between 6 and 7. And for the last one, we have the square root of 87. So we have the square root of 81, which is 9. And the square root of 100, which is 10. Which means to say that the square root of 87 is between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100, which are 9 and 10. Which means that the square root of 81 is somewhere between 9 and 10. And that's it. I hope you learned. Thank you.